leave, I'll leave you with a couple thoughts on Afghanistan. One pessimistic, one optimistic, and then, and then my, I'll, I'll give my own personal thoughts as a, as a final conclusion. This is from David B. Edwards, who's a uh, social anthropologist at Williams College, who's written two beautiful books about Afghanistan. Uh, the first being Heroes of the Age, which talks about this tension in Afghanistan between uh, tribe, state, and Islam. Um, for those of you who are poor college students, and I myself am a poor graduate student, you can download this book for free from University of California Press. But at the end, he says, Afghanistan's central problem is Afghanistan itself. Specifically, certain profound moral contradictions that have inhibited this country from forging a coherent civil society. These contradictions are deeply rooted in Afghan culture, but they have come to the fore in the last 100 years since the advent of the nation state, the laying down of permanent borders, and the attempt to establish an extensive state bureaucracy and to invest that bureaucracy with novel forms of authority and control. Afghanistan as a state is always going to be deeply unstable and deeply troubled and is not going to look like the Westphalian ideal that we have here in the United States. But on the other hand, if we're looking at American and NATO ISAF efforts in Afghanistan, a flip side to that uh, rather dreary assessment is one delivered by Michael Simple, who's at the Carr Center for Human Rights at Harvard and has spent 20 years on the ground in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And he says that, look, when you look at the Taliban, what they are doing is, in essence, fighting a civil war in Afghanistan, a civil war that they can't win because the balance of power has fundamentally shifted since October of 2001, since the fall of the Taliban. Now, they dress that civil war up to look like an insurgency against Western powers, and we play into that when we talk about our war on terror and our great crusade against, uh, against the Islamists in Afghanistan. We completely play into the Taliban narrative. But at the end of the day, the balance of power has shifted to the degree that, uh, that the, uh, the Taliban cannot win. Now from my perspective, <clears throat> I believe that the war in Afghanistan will eventually end through a political solution. That political solution has to be uh, established by setting some, some conditions. We do this by doing a few things. First off, we talk about that balance of power that's shifted since October 2001. What we want to do over the next 18 to 36 months is render more or less permanent that shift in the balance of power. And we do that by creating, first off, by doing two things. First off, we create time and space for the Afghan government. And then second off, we create that time and space in order to build up key institutions, specifically the security services and, uh, and key Afghan uh, institutions such as the Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Mines, those ministries that bring in revenue and those ministries that, uh, that expend the vast amount of revenue. Um, I think we can do that. I don't think, and uh, this pains me as a counterinsurgency uh, specialist, I don't think we really have time to do the kind of population-centric counterinsurgency campaign that General McChrystal um, uh, perhaps desires. But I do think that we have enough time to wage the kind of campaign in Afghanistan that ensures that we strengthen key institutions within the Afghan state and render that state uh, more or less hostile towards the type of transnational terror threats that attacked the United States on September 11th and that continue to threaten it today. Um, that having been said, I've probably spoken a little too long, but I'd love to make uh, whatever time we have for, uh, for a few questions from the audience.